All right. Um, so this is 1.6. We're going to be solving inequalities. All right, we're going to talk about, uh, I think, three types today, so some of it will be pretty easy. The first is a linear inequality. Remember we talked about um, using parentheses and brackets and what they replaced, how it was, when it was an open circle, we would use a parenthesis, when it was a closed circle, we would use a bracket. We're going to continue to talk about this. So when you solve an inequality, you write your answer in interval notation. Okay. So if you have a less than or a greater than, that would like be having an open circle on the number line. So we're going to use parentheses now for those. If you have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, then that's where you would have that closed circle. So we would use brackets there. Okay. So just kind of think about those pieces. Um, all right, so let's do an example of this. Uh, 12x minus 4 is greater than 10. Okay, so when you have um, an inequality, you solve it just like an equation, right? So we're going to add 4 to both sides. We're going to divide by 12. We'll simplify. We get 7 over 6. So x is greater than 7 over 6. Now you got to think about what does that really mean. So remember, anytime you write your answer in interval notation, you always have the smallest number on the left side and the largest number on the right side. So thinking about this, let's go back to the number line for a second. Oh, by the way, I think the book is going to tell you to graph number lines for your solutions. Please don't. You don't have to. You can just write your answers in interval notation now, okay? But if you have to visualize it, that's fine. So thinking about the number line, if we just think about 7, 6, where that is at, right, then what is the smallest x can be? A little bit more than 7, 6, right? So normally you would write an open circle there on the number line. But now instead of the open circle, we're just going to use a parenthesis. And then all of our answers go towards the right side, right? Those are all of the solutions that x can be with the arrow pointed towards what? Infinity. So that is what needs to go on the right side because that's the biggest it can be is infinity. Can you equal infinity? Can we define it? No, so you have to use a parenthesis there. So our final answer is going to look like parenthesis 7, 6, comma, infinity. Okay? This is saying that x is greater than 7 over 6. You know that it's not equal to because there's a parenthesis there and not a bracket. Okay? Let's do another one. Um, let's say this time we had a double inequality, so negative 3 is less than negative 5x <coughs> minus 8, which is less than or equal to 2. Okay, so here with this um, double inequality here, you have to work on all sides, right? So when we add the 8, we have to add it on the left. We're really adding it in the middle, and then we're adding it on the right side, right? We're trying to get x by itself. So when we do this, we get 5 is less than negative 5x, which is less than or equal to 10. Okay, but now there is this special case we need to remember. What's going to happen when I divide by that negative number? Marissa? Yeah, all of the signs have to flip. So, so whether you are dividing or multiplying by a negative number, you have to flip your inequality signs, okay? You should probably make a note of that if you didn't remember. It's including multiplication, right? So if you divide or multiply by a negative when you're solving an inequality, you have to flip the inequality signs. So now when I go through and I divide by negative 5 everywhere, I'm going to get negative 1 is greater than x, which is greater than or equal to negative 2. Now that statement really doesn't make sense, okay? We always read the smallest number on the left to the positive, or the largest number on the right. So I'm just going to reorder this. Negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than negative 1. These, I think, are easier to write in interval notation because it just kind of drops down how it is. If you think about what the number line would look like here, 
we have negative 2, negative 1. Now, this is less than or equal to. So that would be a closed circle. So that closed circle gets replaced with a bracket. Here we have um, x has to be less than negative 1. So that's going to be a parenthesis. That would be that open circle. And then isn't it just everything on the in-between? So that's exactly what drops down into the interval notation. A bracket at negative 2, comma, negative 1 with a parenthesis. Any questions? Okay, everybody okay with linear inequalities? Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about absolute value inequalities. Okay, here um, we're going to look at two cases to kind of talk about this. We'll look at the absolute value of x is greater than 5 and compare that to the absolute value of x is less than 5. Uh, I think you learned this last year. Did you ever hear like great or less than? Did your teacher ever say that before? Okay, that's talking about these absolute value inequalities. So greater... Um, we're going to say great or in order to remember it. So this works for greater than or greater than or equal to. Okay, it's true for both of them. So the great or than case produces two inequalities. And two intervals for our solution. Okay. Um, you're going to have the case of either x is greater than 5 or you're going to flip the inequality sign and change the outside to x is less than negative 5. Thinking about the intervals here, if x is less than negative 5, that means that it goes towards negative infinity, right? So that's our smallest number, that's where we're going to start. So I have negative infinity to negative 5, and that gets a parenthesis. Or I have x is greater than 5. So now I'm in union with 5 to infinity. Okay, so any time you have this greater than case, then you're going to have two inequalities. You're going to have two intervals for your solution, okay, every time. Now, the less than case, we're going to think of it like less than. Okay, and this works for less than or less than or equal to. This produces one inequality and one interval. What you do here is you take your value that's on the right side and you change the sign of it. So I'm going to make this a negative 5 now. And then I have it's less than x and it's less than 5, what I originally had. So this produces the solution of negative 5, comma, 5, both with parentheses. <coughs> Okay, so producing this interval, it's like x is between negative 5 and positive 5. So it's one inequality. Okay, so you have to remember these rules when you're setting up um, your inequality here to solve. So we're going to do like a real problem now. All right, so let's call this example 3. Um, let's start out with the absolute value of 3x plus 4 is greater than 6. I'm going to make some steps here. So, step one, regardless of whatever the sign is, you have to isolate the absolute value. So, step one is to isolate the absolute value. This was also true of an absolute value equation, right? Before you can do anything with absolute value, it has to be all by itself. 
All right, step two. So we have that one done. That's ready to go. Step two is you're going to decide whether to set up two inequalities or one inequality. So now this is where you're going to have to look at the inequality sign that you have. And in this case, we have great or. So we're going to set up then two, right? Because it's a great or case. So then you just have to follow the rules of setting up the inequality. So when you have great or, you have one of them is exactly what you started with. So 3x plus 4 is greater than 6. Or you have 3x plus 4, so the same thing that's in the, inside the absolute value, and then flip the sign is less than, and then change the sign of that constant to negative 6. Okay, so you decide on which one to go with. Is it the great or less than case, and then you set up your inequalities. Step 3, now we just solve the inequality. And then step four, write our answer in interval notation. So that part, once, once you get the setup done, it's easy, right? It's back to a linear inequality. Those are quick and easy to solve. Subtract the four, divide by two, you get x is greater than two thirds. Or subtract the 4, you get 3x is less than ten, negative 10, divide by the 3, and you get x is less than negative 10 thirds. Remember, though, you always have to have the smallest number on the left. So looking at these, x is greater than is going to go towards positive infinity. So I know that one goes on the right. x is less than negative 10 thirds, well, that's going towards the negative infinity. So that's where I start, because negative infinity is the smallest, and we got to have the smallest on the left. So negative infinity to negative 10 thirds. Those are both with parentheses because I have less than and a greater than sign. In union with 2 thirds to positive infinity. Any questions on example three or any of the steps? Everyone okay? Okay, let's try the other case. So, let's say I have 2 times the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is less than or equal to 6. Don't care to see it. The book will tell you to, but you don't have to. Nope. Mm -mm. I just want interval notation. If you have to do that to see the interval notation, that's fine, but I'm not going to be looking for that. Um, what do we have to do first here? Yeah, we have to get the isolated um, absolute values. So we're going to have to divide by 2 first. When we do that, we end up with 2x plus 3 in the absolute value is less than or equal to 3. So now we have to decide what does this sign mean? Less than, great, or. So it's less than, so we're setting up one double inequality, okay? You have to change the sign of the 3, so this is going to become negative 3. You use the same inequality symbol, so negative 3 is less than or equal to. And now you have your absolute value, so 2x plus 3, and then is less than or equal to 3. Now it's easy, right? We're ready to solve. We can do this. We've been doing this for a while, so we're going to subtract the 3. We get negative 6 is less than or equal to 2x, which is less than or equal to 0. Divide by the 2, we get negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 0. <coughs> 
Okay, now we gotta start thinking about kind of that new step of writing it in interval notation. You wanna decide what's your smallest number. Does it get a bracket? Does it get a parenthesis? What's the largest number? What symbol does that get? Do you agree that they both get brackets because they're both less than or equal to? Smallest number is negative three and it goes to zero. Questions on absolute value. Okay, I'm gonna turn the page um, for the next one. Okay, we are gonna talk about one more type and this one is probably the most um, tricky just to kind of get the hang of it. So we're gonna talk about quadratic and higher degree inequalities. Okay, I want you to make yourself a special note here. You must have everything on the left side first. Before you even do anything else, you have to move everything to the left. The right side has to be a zero. Um, always, 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 okay? So let's take a look here um, at example five, and we're gonna start out with x minus three squared is less than or equal to 81. Okay, and again, I'm gonna put some steps on the side here. So the most common mistake students make is they look at this and they see that 81 is a perfect square and you're gonna have to take the square root they think and so if you take the square root of both sides, they're gonna put a nine there. You cannot do that. As tempting as it is, as easy as it looks, you can't. You have to get everything to the left first. So step one, um, move everything to the left. making a zero on the right. No matter how easy it looks. So we're gonna bring over the 81. I'm gonna have x minus three squared minus 81 is less than or equal to zero. Okay, so now I'm ready to start working with this. Um, so step two, we're just going to simplify the left side. Okay, so now I'm going to have to distribute that x minus three times x minus three, giving me x squared minus six x plus nine minus 81 is less than or equal to zero. Combining those like terms, I get a minus, what's that, 72? At that point, I'm ready to try to factor this. So, um, let's see, does it factor? 12 and six, right? So x minus 12 times x plus six is less than or equal to zero. Okay, step four we're going to use the zero product property. To obtain critical values. Okay, so I take x minus 12, set it equal to zero, x plus six, set it equal to zero, that means that x equals 12 and x equals negative six. These are not solutions, okay? These are called critical values. Remember when you're working with an inequality, you're solving for an interval of numbers that makes this inequality true. So it's not like an equation where I'm gonna get these two solutions and my solutions are x is 12 and x is six. I have to figure out which intervals work, okay? So this is gonna be 
Um, I don't think you've done these before. I, I don't think so. So step five, um, you're going to take the critical values and put them on a number line. Um, then choose a value within each interval to test. You cannot choose the critical values. You then test each value and decide which intervals are true or false for that matter. Let me show you what we're going to do here. So the first thing we do is we create this number line. And we put our two critical values that we found on it. So I have negative 6 and 12. Okay? Now, what I want you to think about is really what's going on here is I have three intervals. Right? I have this one. Bless you. I have this one. And I have this one. I want you to think about what kind of numbers are in each one of those intervals. So like here, like negative 100 is in that interval. Negative 7 is in that interval. Negative a million is in that interval. In the purple interval here, I have numbers like negative 5 or 0 or 2 or 11.9999, right? And then in the next one, I have 12.001 all the way to positive infinity. So that is what you're testing. You're testing which group of numbers makes this inequality true, okay? So now what you have to do is you have to pick a number within each one of those intervals, okay? So I'm just going to pick an easy number. I really don't care about the number itself a lot of times. I just really want to think about does this inequality hold true? So I'm going to pick like negative 10. Everyone agree that negative 10 is in that green interval, okay? I cannot choose negative 6. So now what I do is I go back to my factored piece because it's the quickest place to check, okay? And I'm going to plug in negative 10. So I have negative 10 times negative 12 times negative 10 plus 6, and I want to see if that's less than or equal to 0, now, I don't want you to get hung up on the fact that this is negative 22 and this is negative 4. That part really doesn't matter, okay? Because I don't want to have to do negative 22 times negative 4 in my head. I don't want to do it. It's sometimes too much work. What I want to think about is what are the signs, right? It's a quick way to check. So isn't this a negative number and isn't this a negative number? It doesn't really matter what the numbers are because a negative times a negative is a positive. Is a positive less than or equal to 0? No, so that means this interval doesn't work. It's false. All of the numbers, no matter if I chose negative 10 or negative a million, would produce a false solution. You with me? Okay, so now I go to the next interval. I choose a number here. Now, I'm going to choose 0 because it's the easiest one. So I'm going to pick 0. Now I plug in 0. I have 0 minus 12 times 0 plus 6. I want to see if that's less than or equal to 0. Don't get hung up on negative 12 times positive 6. Just think about the signs. This is a negative times a positive. Is a negative times a positive less than or equal to 0? Yeah, it produces a negative solution. So yeah, a negative is less than or equal to 0. That means that this is true. This, all of the numbers within here produce a true solution, whether I chose negative 5.999 or 11.75, okay? They will all work. Now I'll go to the last one. 
12 and on, maybe I'll choose 100, okay? It doesn't matter what number you choose. So when I plug that, I get 100 minus 12 times 100 plus 6 um, is less than or equal to 0. Well, this is a positive times a positive. That is definitely going to produce a positive. That makes this solution false. It doesn't work. So this is a no. Do you see how to test? Now listen, you do not have to do all of this work, okay? I just wanted you to write it down so you can reference it later on so you figure out why I wrote yes, no, yes, no, or whatever, okay? You can do it in your head. They're quick tests, all right? I want to see the number line. I want to see what number you chose. I want to see, you know, whether it works or not. I don't have to see all this, okay? So now, finally, step six, once we have tested everything and we've decided which ones work, we write our answer in interval notation. Okay, so now going back, I'm looking at the yes. Okay, this is the only solution that works from negative six to 12, but now I also have to decide, do I use brackets or parentheses, okay? So I'm gonna go back now and I'm gonna look at my original, which was that it was less than or equal to. So what should I use? Brackets. So I have a bracket, negative six, comma, 12 with a bracket. <coughs> Super good time. They're going to go faster once you, you know, figure out how to test. All right? Ready to try another one? It's going to be fun. <laughs> All right, let's try this one. 2x cubed minus x to the fourth is less than or equal to zero. Okay, so first thing, is everything on the left and zeros on the right? Yes. yes, so I'm ready to go. So now I have to simplify. It's already simplified, okay? Now I have to try to factor it. Is there a GCF? Yes, what is it? Mm, let's take out a positive x cubed. You can take out a negative if you want. You get the same result, but I'm just going to take out a positive x cubed here since my first term is positive. This is going to leave me with 2 minus x is less than or equal to 0. So now I have it factored. I'm ready to use the zero product property. So I have x cubed equals 0 and 2 minus x equals 0. So if I take the cube root of 0, I still get 0. So x is 0 and x is 2. These are not solutions. They're critical values. They're critical numbers. Maybe make a note here. Okay, these are critical values. They go on the number line. Now it's time to test. So I set up my number line. I put a 0. I put a 2. And now I'm going to have you test. So you have to pick numbers between those intervals. You cannot choose 0 and 2. Yes? Yes.
remember you can go back to the factored piece to decide if um, it works you can plug it in you're not really looking for the number itself you're looking for the sign of it right because we can just test it against zero did you get yes no yes you understand you cannot choose zero and two to test okay so now the only solution that works is this middle interval you go back you look at the sign it was a less than and equal to sign so brackets or parentheses Brackets. So I'm going to have a bracket. Well, actually, I take it back. Where do I got to start? Negative infinity. So I start at negative infinity. It's the smallest. Has to have a parenthesis, comma, zero. That one gets our bracket. In union with bracket two to infinity with a parenthesis. So not as much work once you kind of figure out the process, right? It seems overwhelming at first, but you have to do those tests. You have to remember the small rules that go with the tests, okay? Any questions?